It's time for a new case. Recent crown hair transplant review. One of my subscribers asked me to analyze his uh, recent hair transplant and he's worried uh, whether his donor was over harvested or not. And also this hair transplant is gonna be a little bit different than you usually used to see online. You know why? Because on his first transplant, he actually focused most on the crown without touching the hairline at all. So it's gonna be a really interesting case. But before we start, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos just like this. And I'm also sharing a lot of education educational content on hair transplants and hair loss. So everything you need is right here on the channel. Harland does a great job on Instagram, by the way. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, link in the description down below. You were a part of the reason I went ahead with my hair transplant, seeing the process, uh, what I was going to expect and information along the way. I did my transplant 3rd of March, 2022 in Istanbul, Turkey with Longevita and just hit the seven day mark today. I would like to get your opinion on it so far, if possible, as I was unsure if uh, they, the area was over harvested with 3,500 grafts taken from donor area. The donor area looks good, but unsure if shock loss can still set in and lose the density. Well, first of all, congrats on your hair transplant. <laughs> and uh, you know, you actually sent me a picture quite a while ago, like about 10 days ago. So you yeah, assume right now you're roughly in between week two and week three. So again, apologies for the delay response. Uh, nonetheless, I really hope that uh, you managed to take out all, all your scabs and everything uh, safely and it's going pretty good. And for other of you guys that are watching right now this video and curious how to take scabs and uh, you know what to expect in the first you know, like two weeks uh, after the transplant, I actually documented my second transplant quite extensively from day one to day 14 every single day with a lot of useful information for you. So I'm gonna put the link in the description down below for this playlist, go ahead, check it out. So let's dive into the pictures, all right. So pretty big crown and uh, mid scalp severely mintress as well. Although the lateral humps are, uh, you know, here on the sides are pretty strong as well. So which is a really good indication, which means you're not uh, undergoing currently um, you know, miniaturization towards Norwood 6 or even Norwood 7. So that's a great sign. Even though the crown looks pretty big, it looks like you have really strong, uh, you know, forelock over here, which is, to be honest, which is amazing. Like uh, having this part specifically in the like very front of the hairline natural or as natural as possible is always great. So you can, you know, cover the transplant, just the corners, leave this area natural and you're gonna look really great. So in my opinion, you're Norwood 5. It's really hard to say uh, anything really about your donor area from this particular picture is, first of all, uh, it's underexposed, it's very dark in the room, uh, and it's not really focused properly. Again, it's like just like a big black, you know, uh, blur, but it doesn't look like you have a, a severe retrograde alopecia over here. Maybe just a tiny bit, it looks like it might be. Again, it's a good sign that it's not actually eating inside of your, you know, donor area. So it basically gives you more grafts availability for the transplant. So I'm not sure when this picture was taken. I would expect maybe it's day seven since, I don't know, like there, I don't see much scabs left because usually it's like just full of scabs. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you took out most of your scabs already on day seven, which is quite early, but you know what, it's actually, it's not a big deal. It's actually fine. You shouldn't be alarmed by this and uh, you good job. Most people are actually <laughs> scared to even touch this area, you know. <laughs> even up to day seven. And the first thing that comes to my mind is basically implantation pattern. Uh, it's implanted pretty much in rows. Like you can like draw a clear line here. One, two, three, five, like, you know, basically everywhere in line. If incisions are done in this manner, usually it means the person doesn't really know how to do it properly because, you know, let's, let's be realistic in, uh, in nature, you know, the hair is not like growing in like in these lines. Surely, if you have a lot of, you know, hairs in between, then, you know, you would be fine. It's just creates this kind of, you know, balance and nobody would gonna notice. And actually, chances are that nobody gonna notice this implantation pattern once the hair grown up uh, anyways. But uh, the fact of the matter is that if, for example, for some reason in the future, you would decide to keep your hair really, really short, like even a guard, you know, one, two, or even three, it's very likely it's gonna be really visible in the, like exactly this, you know, implantation patterns. Unless, of course, you're gonna go for a second round, add some more density and kind of, you know, implant in between. So maybe can kind of like balance it out a little bit. I'm not sure if I can see a whorl in this area. So uh, again, it might be just the angle. And uh, there is a little bit of a spot, like an empty spot here, which is uh, interesting. It's weird, actually. I wonder if maybe it's like a scar tissue or something that they have and they just avoid it or 
whatever it is. Here is interesting, looks like a, a hole. What did they like extract it out or maybe you pulled it out? Well, anyways, even if that's the case, it's just one grab, doesn't make any difference. So as we can see, it's uh, the, he still receded in the hairline, but uh, I assume uh, the crown was bothering him the most because uh, yeah, to be honest, if he gonna grow his like, you know, hair a bit longer, uh, he kind of, he can, you know, hide this thinning, you know, uh, temple temples, and it's not really gonna look that bad. And especially if he gonna have more hair just immediately behind it, it's not gonna look that bad. It's gonna look actually pretty natural, to be honest. That's his donor hair, and he said he was uh, concerned whether he was over harvested or not. So from the first uh, glance, again, two things. First of all, the donor is amazing. Like, look how many grafts per centimeter square there are. Even this is after extractions. And like, it's so many hairs, it's like, good for you, man. Um, to be honest, even my donor is uh, exceptional, but I feel like yours is even better. So your hair looks a bit, you know, thicker than mine as well. The second thing that I've noticed that your extractions were done also surprisingly in the lines, in a kind of in a row pattern. Like you can, you can see here rows of the extractions, which is quite unusual. Looking at this other picture, yeah, it, Definitely looks like, you know, it's been done in a, in a rose, which is not perfect. But again, since you have so much hair in your donor, it's very unlikely gonna stand out at all. Uh, unless, you know, they damage surrounding grafts and you're gonna have a shock loss. On the contrary, the, the punch sizes, they don't look really big. They actually look pretty small and, you know, consistent with the, whatever it's uh, a standard in the industry. So, so that's great, you know. My only concern is that uh, when Extractions are done in this kind of pattern. It usually indicates that the person is just again doesn't know properly how to do it, and also he he might be like rushing, so he's just like extracting like one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, like quite quickly. And in this case, they might not take as much time needed for each individual graph to extract safely. Therefore, they might be damaging them. And in this case, my concern is that the survival rate might be actually low. Just purely to the fact that if it's been done quickly, you know, they might damage a lot of them, you know, uh, while they're doing it. We cannot really establish right now, you need to s wait and see a minimum eight to 10 months basically down the line. So hopefully everything gonna grow well, but even worst case scenario, you still have a huge amount of grafts available for the future transplants. Again, I cannot really see the world, it looks like it's just everything done in, in the lines. So I don't expect to have this really ni nice world pattern, but again, maybe we just don't see from these pictures. Uh, very blurred picture, but yeah, the donor, um, it looks, to be honest, for some people gonna look really horrible and it looks like it's taken a lot. You know, actually I'm thinking maybe it is taken a bit more than three and a half thousand. Because if you compare to my uh, extractions during my first transplant, I had 3,659 grafts extracted, it also, uh, has been taken from wide area from all over the donor area and it looks also a lot but I feel like my extractions were like a spaced a bit further from each other and but it's possible it's been taken a bit more than been implanted especially considering the fact that you know it seems like the overall work was like you know kind of rushed extraction so you know and implantations so yeah I don't want to ring the bells it's possible it's just 3500 and I hope uh, it is I bet this picture is of your donor area at day seven or something like this, which to be honest, it looks excellent. Like it looks really good. Again, I want to emphasize the amount of hair you got in your donor. It's just, it's just phenomenal. So good for you. <laughs> Again, I'm really jealous. To be honest, I believe it's gonna be just, just okay. It's gonna be your donor, gonna be fine. So I don't think you should be concerned about over harvesting unless you notice in the meantime, while well, like you're still waiting for my assessment, that you notice some you know patchiness in your you know donor area. But from this picture so far, looks good. So that's the old pictures I've got. I wish best of luck with your recovery. Uh, let me know actually uh, in the comments down below what do you guys think of you know this particular transplant. And if you were the one on the video, let me know in the comments down below as well. And maybe you can even update us as well as you progressing you know with your transplant. I would be really curious to see how it goes, you know, after six months, after 12 months especially. And if any of you guys are actually researching currently, like, you know, transplant clinic to go to yourself and you don't know really which one to choose, I've got a really great video just over here for you that's gonna basically teach you and show you exactly what to look for to find the best clinics for you. Stay tuned.